Hey everyone, and on today's episode of Pinch House Garage, we're working on the driver's side of Ian's Mark IV uh, GLI. We're going to get everything wired up, and we're going to show you how to do it. So let's get to work. This is Pinch House Garage. <laughs> First things first, we're going to need to figure out what goes actually where um, while we work. So, one of the things you guys got to see is know your wiring loom and what goes, what actually goes in its location. So, um, there's a lot of wires in your loom, but a lot of it goes only to one specific spot, a lot of it doesn't go everywhere. What you're really going to focus on uh, here is what actually goes in different locations. Number one, uh, we're going to split this into one, two, three looms. There's technically three looms in here. Okay, so the very first one is the most obvious one, and it's attached to your body's rail or the frame. And this is the one right here. And this is your fan and uh, your fan control loom here. So uh, you'll see your fan control module right down below. And then you're going to see these wires right here. This is your headlight, so this can be just set aside, not a big deal. This is the uh, fan uh, control switch, and then these are the actual fan uh, wires here. This is actually what makes the fans turn on, or gives the fans power. This right here is, t is tells when the fans actually kick on and when to turn them off. Um, so these guys, you have nothing to do with. You have to wait until the end when you put your front end back on for these guys to go on. So. Pretty straightforward headlight, fan switch, uh, fan power wires here. So that's done. That part of the loom is set <laughs> in stone. Now we're going to show you what's here. We're going to be cutting some of the loom, um, trimming like zip ties off and stuff so we can see how everything lays out in its proper location. So I'm going to get this loom stuff out of the way because it's, it's annoying so you'll see here right at the start there's gonna be two sensors coming right off of here and you'll see them right here they look very close to each other but no I mean they're actually not the same this is the starter so a solid starter solenoid wire and this is your reverse light um, so this is for your starter right here we're going to plug this bad boy right here in and then your reverse light switch is down over here like that. Now since this is already here we're going to get that and we're going to loom it in uh, towards the end get it all nice and snug with the wiring so it doesn't look so bad. Okay. So there's another wire that branches right off of it as well and this is the ground strap. This guy goes right down here. You'll see it hit the ground right there, and then it kind of tees off onto the battery post. So this guy plugs in right here on the block, or actually on the transmission, um, and it bolts on right there, just like that. So that guy is set. Now we're going to go this loom right here this guy is your alternator and AC loom and your main power alternator wire so this guy lays here I gotta get the little uh, plastic part that goes right here uh, so we can wire uh, you know uh, feed it correctly but that's where that lays down now here's your big big wire um, portion okay now this always for Everybody who looks at this is very, very intimidating um, because it is. It is a very intimidating loom here. Um, 
you'll see here this is uh, your ignition coil uh, loom and this is your speed sensor so there's a ground post here guys so these go in and they follow the, uh, the side of the head easily and to you know straight to it uh, right here is your fuel injector rail and all your other components so these right here N75 coolant sensor and the VVT sensor are right here so these three are the ones who kind of fan off to the right of the head um, and then all your other little sensors here down below we're gonna feed this all in in just a second uh, so remember this bracket here that we took off earlier in the in the in the season. You got to make sure you got to keep this in here uh, for pretty much the primary purpose of holding this loom in place for you guys. So this guy feeds this way. Make sure you feed it like this, okay? And try to keep it as high as possible, but without putting too much tension to the. Uh, the main wire on here okay and then this lays down right here on top of the rail and goes like that and then this goes in this direction just like that and you'll notice everything's kind of laying down on its own um, by itself there's like really nothing crazy about it now You'll see there's a knock sensor here, and immediately to the left of it, there's another knock sensor. So we got to pay attention to that. This one with a single port or a single wire is your uh, your oil pressure sensor. And then this is your crank sensor. This is actually part of the uh, 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 the N249 and N75 setup that sits under here uh, under the factory. So this actually has no more use for you. Uh, so this just stays on its own, not plugged in, okay? So we're going to run this down here, the crank sensor. And kind of do our best job here to plug it in. Just like that. And you have two knock sensors, one knock sensor on here. The second one is actually on your um, on your fuel injector harness, and I'll show you guys that when I get to that point. That one's in a kind of a funky spot. Um, I think yeah, this is not bolted down yet, so I got to remember that. Now this harness, I like to put it behind here. I like uh, from the factory, it sits in front of it, but I actually like it in the front, like that. Um, then we'll get it all wired in this one up here that has the the power uh, ad, uh, Adapter here. This is all part of the uh, Alternator and then the one pigtail by itself is for the actual AC um, uh, motor here uh, or the AC pump now uh, This harness right here if you see my finger with the alternator wire has a plug-in you leave that all together Do not mess with that this guy that sits up in front that goes down to the front of the car um, pretty much has no purpose besides the one wire that goes all the way over here to your um, the top of your uh, power steering pump and that's it that's that's its only job now because this is part of the SAI system and we no longer have that in the car so it's legitimately useless um, again this is just a useless pigtail that's just sitting there um, We'll figure out how to nicely uh, route it onto here and get it all on there nicely. We're probably just going to loom it around with some tape. Uh, that way it's just nice. Uh, we're going to get the, the mounting bracket that goes on top of here. So this sits really nice on the loom on here. Same back with this wire. This is going to go on the back here. Okay. And that's everything here uh, that's underneath now on top. You can go one or two ways on this loom. You can go and make it look like factory, like this. Or the second option is take apart the entire plastic bracket and then take these guys apart and feed the wiring underneath and then put it on top. And so this can sit underneath right here, underneath the rail and go across, which is the route we're going to go on this one. So 
Uh, we want to clean up the engine bay as much as we can in this car, so that's what we're going to do. So now what we're going to do is take apart this, this uh, little plastic rail that's no longer needed. Some electrical tape on it on the end. Again, guys, this is not something that everyone can has to do. It's just the route that we're going with this car. And then you'll know, keep in mind that everything has its spot, so you really won't mess up its location and how to mount it. Uh, that's the beauty of this har of all engine harnesses. They're not like, oh, you can mess it up. No, not really. It's hard to mess these up. Uh, it honestly is. See, so yeah, I push that side out just like that. These sit in here pretty snug. So definitely focus on pushing these out slowly. Not slowly, but harshly, but with, uh, with focus. Yeah, there you go. Just, you know, take your time. You don't want to damage anything. All right, so now that's all nicely stripped. And you'll see that's all pretty much all, all loosey-goosey here. So now this whole loom is nice and toward taken apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to feed it. Let's see here. Because we can't feed it from underneath the manifold because it's not long enough. So I'm thinking we're going to sit it in front of the manifold. I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but we're going to make sense to that. So bring this up kind of like, like that. What I'm going to do is before we cram it all the way down, pay attention to how everything sits back down and see if that works. If not, I'm not liking the way that works. Maybe. Hold on. I do like that. It looks really good. Just like that. Not bad. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. So, it actually turned out really nice. Uh, again, it's with this 034 manifold that it's coming out the way it's coming out because it's very different in comparison to the factory manifold. The factory one does sit lower and deeper, so the so when you mount your wiring, it doesn't look the same. Uh, it's definitely a different look to it, look and feel, that's for sure. You see right there. Now you're gonna find all these extra little hose holders. Just throw them aside. Don't throw them away yet. Just keep them aside because we might need them later and in in, in during the. Uh, um, the, the build process here. Now this is your cam sensor, your cam position sensor which sits right here on the side of the head. And 
this is your idle temp sensor right here and then uh, that pigtail plugs in right here so once we get that part in this is the throttle position sensor this is your knock sensor which is down here right here so that one doesn't fit where it's supposed to go because it's fished through incorrectly we got to go through the other side of the harness right here down here through the middle of it which it won't let me do so that's weird this is not thick enough this is too thick so one problem already found not that big of a problem but it is a problem because I don't like wires getting tugged so what I'm gonna have to do is turn the knock sensor uh, clock it to the left so this can plug in uh, correctly with the 13 millimeter there we're gonna clock it and then to turn it to the left and that way that plug plugs in correctly yeah I did not like that but it shouldn't be that big of a deal and then again throttle position sensor and then your map sensor which is on your intercooler piping done now we're over here with your ignition harness now we're gonna fish this down over here to the left you'll see I mean it's really not crazy to, <laughs> to install the harness okay so I did leave this little factory mount here so it stays nice and tight down here Now you'll see here, this is the uh, the uh, sensor for the uh, speed sensor uh, that's on mounted on the transmission. That just fishes through down this way. And you just go plug that sucker in down below. Now we're here on top of the valve cover. We're going to clip these guys in. And obviously we don't have the um, factory mounts anymore for these, for this little sucker right here. So you can take these off. Uh, one thing we're going to make for this guy is a nice little heat shield. That way we don't bake the crap out of these wires. And then here's his ground post, which is no longer there. So we're going to use this right here, this little mounting bolt on the uh, the uh, 2.0T coil pack spacer, or you can use this spot right here on top of the on the back of the valve cover, right back here. You can use that as a ground spot as well, um, since it was grinded off for a smooth valve cover. It's not a big deal. You have other posts that you can bolt that onto. Uh, but you got to make sure that this wire is actually grounded to the valve cover So now that we have pretty much all the wiring done on the engine, you know We just have it placed we haven't wired it up actually, but it's wired to where everything needs to go Now we got to focus on the disaster here. That is uh, that is his uh, rain tray and This stuff um, so there's a couple ways that we can go about this to cleaning the uh, this harness portion about um, my first thing is probably gonna electrical tape this to keep this kind of like uniform and in a shape um, and then again go down this way and just keep everything as tidy as possible but again since we can't shave or wire tuck this side it's kind of hard to do this uh, and these like this these ballast connectors um, we have to figure out a better way to mount these and not make them look so bad. Uh, same with this relay that he has wired into it. 
Uh, the reason why it's bunched up like this is because he has it actually wired to be removable inside there. So what we're going to do is actually take it out. It's fed inside the cockpit of the car. So we're just going to yank all of that and feed it back underneath the dash. That way you just see just a relay just chilling here versus this big blob of wiring. Um, and there, so that should be simple. And then we're going to get the battery tray back up on here uh, after we get everything else nice and tidy. And that's that's it for the for the engine bay. I mean, for wiring, I mean, it's it's so so basic. You know, obviously, you know, I say that because I've been doing this such, for such a long time, but it's honestly it is. It is a very basic harness on these cars. Everything falls into play. Um, we're going to show you how to clean up this corner of the bay as well. There's actually a cool little trick for this. Um, so we'll get to that in just a moment. So we're back. Now we're going to have to figure out how to clean up this mess here that he has. And it's not that hard. Uh, number one, we're going to figure out this relay that he has wired up here for the uh, light bar he has. And the light bar is for his roof rack, so it's nothing actually that's on the car all the time. It's just when he's using his roof rack. So uh, I'm thinking we're going to clean this up by probably going to fish it because um, it just needs a power and a ground. And that's it. But the way that he this relay is designed is sucky because of where this goes so like these two main wires I mean, we can just put that there and then put everything else behind here so that shouldn't be that hard and we'll fix that and then there's another ugly thing that's always here is these this relay box and it only holds two relays and this is empty space for other stuff so we're going to show you how to delete that as we work so, pretty straightforward, just pop these guys out. You can pull the relays out if you want. And then these little clips here that hold the relays in place. Pretty easy. And then this box we no longer need. See? So this box is no longer needed. That's gone. Now we're going to go over here to the waterfall tray. So these relays just stay here. Um, you're going to have to need to cut this piece off. Because you're again, it's no longer needed. But please be safe when cutting things because you don't want to rip cut something you're not supposed to cut. Okay. Okay, that's gone. Now you have this big old relay just chilling here, this loom. So this is what we're gonna do to fix that. So you can go down here on the waterfall tray is what we call this. We're gonna pop this open in here and then this actually just goes right in here they actually sit in here quite nicely you can go up or down it's up to you and your comfort level you know and just cram them in there just like that and just make sure they fit in here um, they, they, they fit I guarantee you guys they fit uh, just like that and then go back to your waterfall tray and we're going to close that up. And then that's all taken care of. You see? Beautiful. No more ugly black box chilling there. Now you still have your MAF and your brake uh, fluid reservoir sensor or level sensor. We have this ugly power wire just chilling here. And we're going to show you guys where to put this actually. There's actually a good little hidden spot 
uh, inside this tray that actually allows wiring to go through to hide it. And that's what we're going to use as well for this, this relay here to hide this whole entire loom underneath here so it's just clean it's just just a clean loom um, and then that will be the end of that right there so we're going to disconnect this power wire and this uh, ground wire from here so we can unplug everything and wire everything up nicely and then after that once everything's tucked in underneath here then we'll be able to put everything back into place with the battery tray and whatnot and that should be it. Honestly, that's all we can really do on this part of the engine bay to clean it up. Still not that bad. It's a vast improvement to what he had, um, for sure. Uh, I don't know why he decided to run it over here when there's just a spot right here on your waterfall to run this wire as well. Um, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help. You know. This was part of the problem here. He ran that switch through there. Ay, 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 Mr. Ian. Good thing I know how he runs wires in these cars. That's a, that one cool thing he showed me was this. There's a fat little hole or rail here that gives you a lot of space for uh, tucking a wire, big old wire like this. I learned that from him and definitely uh, appreciate that cool little trick because that worked really well for the Outlander for running the, uh, the light bar on top of the Outlander. So this will give me the ability now to tuck all this this way. Like this. This is what we wanted to do. Just like this. Run this here. If it's possible, we might be able to cram this somewhere maybe down here. Yeah, it actually worked. Let's see here. Yeah, we gotta unbolt all this over here so I can feed the wire down below and kind of put it over there and that's actually gonna look really 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 good in comparison to what he had I mean, this still bugs me it being here but still it is an improvement an improvement is always a win in my book So we got the wiring all nicely fed in here the way I want it. We just got to make sure push it into the right because we don't want to get the, the wiper motor affected by it. Kind of like push it over here to the right. 
right now. And then this here, that relay fits beautifully down there. And we'll push down into that. Again, this guy sits here. This guy sits here. Just like that. Wish there was a way to like hold them in place without trying to pull that whole loom out. You know, I'm going to just give this a try and see if this works. If it does, I'm going to leave it alone. But if it doesn't, we'll try something else out. But I'm very curious right now because this is looking really good. Very, very promising so far. So, where's my waterfall tray here? Here it is. Ha! Huh, that worked! That actually worked really, really well. Uh, all that's left here is just this wire, which we can put underneath, and we're done. That actually cleans up the bay substantially. So, not too shabby, guys. I'm actually pretty impressed with myself with that. I was able to push all that out of the way. If you saw, remember how bad it was. So all that's left now uh, in, this, in this process is to uh, put your battery tray back on and go in reverse and put all that back together. All we're going to do now is just get our uh, a little loom holder here. Our loom holder that goes here that holds this main wiring down over here. And that's it. We just finished the entire engine bay uh, wiring process. It's like again, it's not super difficult. It's really a matter of just being patient and finding your little little places to cram things I wish I can do a better job in hiding all the wiring in this one but because we're keeping the battery on the front of the car we cannot do that um, so we're kind of kind of stuck or dead in the water for that for that setup but again it's something we gotta really uh, consider when whenever someone wants a specific thing done to their car we definitely got to consider what they want uh, before we do it you know um, so he wanted that really badly, so I, I'm going to leave it alone and keep it that way for him. All right, everyone, that's that's tuned. That concludes our episode today on wire managing the right side of the engine bay. Uh, next, we'll be finishing it up, getting everything plugged in, like not plugged in, but all settled back into place. Everything bolted down. We got to double check all our hardware and bolts. Put in the new hoses. Uh, we're gonna show you guys the next episode we're actually gonna show you guys how to make a custom catch can using uh, integrated engineering's uh, breather fittings here uh, so that's very very cool I'm very excited to show you guys how to make a catch can set up it's super cheap and very very easy to do uh, I'm trying to think over there we got nothing special over there yeah that's pretty much it and then we're gonna once everything is finally buttoned up and checked in we're gonna fill it up with oil turn it on and break in the engine uh, there is a thorough process for engine break-in so please please follow that uh, follow those instructions when we get to that point uh, but again just stay tuned and we'll we'll keep you guys uh, informed as we go during the process thank you again for watching this episode of pinchas garage peace out and as always here we're gonna break we're gonna fix and we're gonna repeat peace out everyone